Dr. Rosa Wilson. Most of my, or the students that I work with call me Dr. GW because there's something about my last name they just don't like, <laughs> but it's really not bad. Um, so I am the director of the program. Um, in addition to this information session, you can always reach out to me and I'll mention that during the, the presentation, we'll provide you with my contact information. Um, I'm happy to talk to anybody about this program or even give you some insight on some of the other um, options we have at the university if you decide informatics isn't quite what you're looking for. But I really hope you do because it's, it's a great time to be in informatics. So um, Liz, would you like me to share my screen and let you kick this off? That would be fantastic, thanks. Okay, let's see here. And you should see a very pretty background and I'm gonna make this presentation nice and big. Okay, can everybody see my uh, presentation? Not yet. We still see the screen. My background screen? Um, we, well, I still see just the entire, um, okay, like all, let of me the, all of the attendees. Oh, you see all the attendees. Oh, okay. Well, this lovely little That's my view. <laughs> presentation should be, okay. Can you see oh, it? Yeah. Now it's coming. There we go. Okay. Now I see. Yeah, if you make it bigger, bigger. I think. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm going to put it in presentation mode. Now, Perfect. can you see it? Sure can. Okay, take it away, Liz. Yeah, so again, my name is Liz, and on that website, uh, right below the healthcare informatics information session, you can see um, our, our website, so you can go ahead and access that at any time to get further information or to feel, um, feel you know, as though you've got all the information you need at your fingertips pun intended with informatics information session. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, so Dr. G, I'm gonna have you, or GW, I'm gonna have you provide maybe a little bit more detail just in terms of your background and experience so that folks can know who you are and um, why you're here with us today. Absolutely. Um, so I am uh, Dr. Jerusa Wilson. I'm the program director. I'm relatively new at the university. I've been there uh, two years, January 1 of this year. Um, which is pretty exciting. Um, now, my uh, nursing career is very, very long tenured. Um, it's over 40 years, primarily in the perioperative area. So that's the OR. But I, that's essentially where I got introduced to a lot of informatics because there's so much technology. And uh, informatics is technology and bringing the data and the information to the bedside. So the informatics experience is well over 20 years, and I actually got introduced to the foundation of informatics before there was a specialty. Um, so I obtained that information in my introductory courses for my BSNMS degree in um, Northeastern University in Boston. And uh, at that point, there weren't really any programs, so that I was taking a nursing administration course and they decided, well, let's just throw some informatics in there. Um, nice to know that fast forward to our current time, about um, 10 years ago, Northeastern actually integrated an entire nursing informatics program into their um, offerings, as well as the rest of the country got on board with informatics. So that's essentially how I got into this um, discipline, which I find very exciting and um, extremely useful because it takes your clinical knowledge and it connects it to the tools that we're using, those digital tools. So we'll, we'll hear more about that. And I'm gonna give this back to Liz so that she can continue the story of CU. Absolutely. So um, just to give you a little bit of more background about CU Anschutz Medical Campus, and we often refer to it as CU Nursing, um, we are accredited by the U.S. Department of Education, um, and we actually were recently designated as a Hispanic serving institution, which has been pretty exci exciting for the institution as a whole. Um, as of our online programs, our master's programs within CU Nursing, actually we have um, the top ranked nursing programs across the board in the state of Colorado and many of our programs are ranked 
nationally as well. And so actually all of our online master's programs were ranked um, in the top 10 in the nation, um, which is, was really exciting for us. Um, and that just came out from US News and World Report uh, about three weeks ago. And so what's cool is that that was, um, that was considering and looking at over 200 programs in, across the nation. And so um, to be in the top 10 is pretty exciting for us. And it really speaks loudly and speaks volumes for our faculty and our staff who are you know, helping to educate uh, all of our students who decide to enroll. Um, oh, go back one more or forward one more. Yep. And so just to kind of give you some clarity, um, many of you, it sounded like are in the Denver metro area, but just to make sure that everybody's kind of fully aware, because sometimes this does get confusing. Um, the College of Nursing is actually located on the CU Anschutz Medical Campus. And so we, our primary location is in Aurora, Colorado. Well, you're, we'll talk more about this later, but this program is primarily online. Um, but there's four campuses that fall within the CU system. That's the University of Colorado Boulder, which is kind of the, the mothership, and then the University of Colorado Denver, and then um, and then University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, and then the newest um, school, which was really we found this location and we um, moved to Aurora in 2006. So it's a very new campus in consideration to all those um, college institutions across the country. And so, you know, we have nationally recognized faculty who are seen and viewed as leaders in nursing education, uh, research, and service. And so um, when you when you become a car part of CU, you really start to see that and see how it's infused in the culture here and, and how there's just such incredible staff who are so vested in the profession. Um, it's really neat to be a part of. And we can jump forward. Um, just learning a little bit about kind of what is graduate education and, and maybe even thinking about how does it differ from, you know, when you had enrolled previously, getting your bachelor degree, those kinds of things. And so um, especially today, you know, we really look at it as a, an age of rapid information where there's um, there's truly information at our fingertips at any point in so many different arenas whether it be from online, Google, all of our research engines through the university. Um, but so much of uh, graduate level education is really learning about how to access that information and how to make sure that we're aware of um, what quality education is available and what research is available for us out there to really help enhance our learning. And a lot of that is done through technology, right? And understanding what technology is out there and um, how, and so especially with this program, really looking at um, how are we utilizing and, and collecting data and information and, and analysis um, so that you can really become an expert in your in your department or if you're kind of looking to advance your career and maybe um, be considered for other positions. Uh, you know, with some of our APRN um, programs, there's a lot of simulation that's done. Uh, and, the, and the other big thing that we really like to focus on is that this that our graduate programs are often very self-directed, right? Um, many students have different interests, different passions, areas of expertise, areas that they really want to develop in themselves. And so our faculty are ultimately here to help you develop those skills and um, really choose the arena that you want to become the expert in. And so there's a lot of that self-driven autonomy that you'll find here. Uh, and then one of the philosophies that we carry and really uh, is critical and important to us is that we learn together and no one is an expert in everything. And so just kind of knowing that the faculty are here to help guide your learning and not always necessarily teach you everything, right? Because um, there's also going to be learning on both sides where faculty learn with you and alongside you and you get to help educate um, the folks who are in your cohorts and your classes as well. So we also like to speak with people about what our mission is. The College of Nursing prepares leaders in clinical nursing research and community service. It integrates the delivery of exemplary healthcare, discovers and translates new knowledge to improve health in Colorado and beyond. Um, and so our vision is really to shape the future of health. And we have these pillars that we, you know, that are our values. And so we do that through academic excellence, leadership and service, health and well-being, collaboration and community, discovery and innovation and diversity and inclusiveness. And so you're gonna hear us kind of touch on those values and see how they're incorporated in everything that we do throughout this presentation. And, and um, if you were to enroll, you know, you'd definitely see that while you're a student here at CU. Okay, this is where I get to uh, start my portion of the presentation. So 
I'm going to give you a little bit of the history of the CU Healthcare Informatics Program because it was one of the original programs in a school of nursing. Um, the, the predecessor faculty member who established this program, Dr. Um, Diane Skiba, she she wasn't a nurse, but she had a lot of informatics background and she collaborated with the university to bring this program in 1997. She created the program and helped establish it for 1997. And why is that significant is because the discipline of nursing informatics and informatics as a whole wasn't even recognized by the American Nurses Association until 1995. Um, Prior to that, or I should say 1992, but the first scope and standards for nursing informatics was released in 1995. That means this program was developed in tandem with the original scope and standards of nursing informatics. Um, there's also a uh, foundational group called the TIGER group, meaning Technology Informatics Guiding Education Reform. They established the initial competencies of what informatics needed to be specifically for nursing. So there's, and I'll talk a little bit about this, there's a huge discipline of informatics, but this is something that was really specific to nursing. And these competencies also were amplified in the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act in 2009, where we started to look at the adoption of electronic health records. So you can see the program really was uh, forward thinking for what the United States needed at the time. And now we have digital health care delivery in almost everything that we do. And if you have Fitbits, or maybe you have some kind of a tracker, or uh, you've got an app on your phone, you are actually engaging with health informatics and the digital delivery of healthcare. So this quote comes from one of our graduates from uh, 2021. She was an excellent student, but more importantly, she, she was just entering into the informatics space and she states that before program, she didn't really know a whole lot of information about in, informatics as a whole, but now in the project requirements and her daily activities and everything that she learned from the program, like evidence-based theory and different standards for building and training, she's doing that on a daily basis. So you can see where this is really a hands-on um, a competency-based program that will help you operationalize your profession going forward. So um, we still co connect with um, Danielle, and you never know, you might actually get to meet her one day if you're doing a practicum where she works. So the program is designed to be extremely flexible because we know our students are, are very, very busy. Um, so the program is built to be remote and asynchronous, though we do have some courses where we provide synchronous um, online interaction with the students. It, but if you can't make it, we record the content so that the individual can actually go back, who missed it, can actually go back and listen to it. Importantly, because this is an all online program and it's asynchronous, we have a global community, meaning we get students from all over the world engaging in this program. So we um, also have a very affordable program. Unlike many of the other universities in the country, we provide in-state tuition rates for all of the students. Now, if you go on our website, you're going to see that there's a higher rate for out-of-state students. Um, but our informatics students get what we call a buy-down, meaning that after um, 
if they've enrolled in a course, they will see a tuition drop at a designated period so that you're paying the same rate as a student who's in state. And so that makes it very, very affordable for many students. And you connect that with tuition reimbursement from where you work or grants or scholarships, it becomes even more affordable. Um, with our students, it's, it's very engaging being on an online um, community. It's not that you're just working by yourself. You will be engaging with students in your cohort for a particular course. We have a lot of dialogues. We have group projects um, so that your, your learning is continuous throughout the entire program. And importantly, the program is succinct. Um, so our program, the healthcare informatics program is 34 credits. But that meets the minimum requirements of 30 credits for a master's that is established by our accreditation agencies. There's a lot of innovation that occurs um, within this program. I've already mentioned the flexibility of the program, but I also want you to know that the courses are designed to make online learning really interesting, collaborative, and available. Um, you're, as I mentioned, you're going to be engaging but you're also going to be using um, innovative uh, technologies and tools. You do some hands-on projects, and you're going to participate in discussions and career-focused coursework to give you those competencies that I mentioned that you'll have when you graduate and you start in your profession. Importantly, you're going to be supported from the first day that you apply and you're accepted into the program. And you're going to be supported throughout all of your program courses, even through graduation. And to tell you the truth, I've had some alumni come back to me and say, can you provide me with some information? And I do that, and along with the other faculty, because they're CU students. And we want to see our students excel and um, grow in their profession. So as a CU student, you're going to be connected to this dynamic network of over 480,000 University of Colorado alumni. And you're going to see some of those alumni in the courses that, um, that they're instructors. So they're adjunct instructors or they graduated, they practice, and they come back and they become faculty within the different programs and the informatics program too. One of the... Um, Benefits that you'll get as a student here is um, a free student uh, membership to the Healthcare Information Management Systems Society, also called HIMS because it's so long. Um, but HIMS is a great way to network with other individuals in um, informatics. That means not only the healthcare clinicians or physicians, but you'll also network with some of the um, folks that are in industry. They'll be in the national level, meaning that they're working with government or maybe government um, uh, professionals and representatives. So HIMSS is a very valuable uh, benefit that our students get. Uh, they also provide a lot of continuing education information that you can use during your program. So our program has a number of different faculty and as uh, Liz mentioned, they're nationally and internationally known for their work. Dr. Duan Bach, she does a lot of research using informatics, uh, looking at health disparities in uh, geriatric and marginalized population. Dr. Tonong, he is from the School of Medicine and he um, actually teaches our database management. So he's very interested in seeing what the large databases, that big data that you hear about, what, what we can do with it and what we can um, filter through to change healthcare practice. Dr. Mustafa Askanyak, um, he's not a nurse, he's a data engineer, and he works with us and teaches in our college of nursing, and his research is focused on workloads, and he's done a number of studies that look at emergency nursing, home health care, um, long-term care, and he's currently working on a study in pediatric medicine. So you can see that our faculty, they're, they're still actively engaged 
not only with our students, but in the research to inform our practice. And Dr. Samantha Stonebreaker, um, she's one of our newer faculty, and her research interest is looking at HIV solutions, digital tools for um, individuals who are in, I believe, Honduras. I'm not sure, but she's an international researcher, and she's also bringing that knowledge that she's gained in teaching within the college on um, digital applications, and students actually get to mock up some um, digital tools that could possibly be used going forward in their practice. Our curriculum design, we have, um, it, it's pretty routine. So the, if you're looking on the left-hand side here, the evidence-based practice, nursing theory, health policy, and the foundations of informatics, those are core courses for the entire graduate school, meaning our, all of our nursing graduate students take those courses. So you're not just working with informatics students, you're working with the broader population of students come in, so certificate students and all of the different nurse practitioner programs that we have. Then we get into our core um, courses that are central to the informatics program, which is decision support and database management, semantic representation, which talks about those terminologies that are embedded within digital applications so that they can communicate data and share data. And then the information technology systems life cycle, and that's essentially the, the birth to retirement of technology, and then advanced practicum, which I'll talk a little bit more about. We also have specialty courses. So as Liz mentioned, we have um, a program that tailors education to the student. And this is where the informatics students can get some very key concepts. One is digital tools that I mentioned about. We have another one course that talks about the human computer interface design principles. We have a database management course and also a um, and knowledge management that builds off of the decisions for database management. But how do you store all of that um, intellectual capital that organizations have and how, how do you manipulate it? In, ex very exciting. We have a collaboration with our Boulder campus where they have a a master's in business analytics that is going to have a healthcare analytics track. And those students are going to be taking a couple of courses over in the College of Nursing, um, specifically in the healthcare informatics program. But importantly, our students can now pick up more analytic based courses um, because of this collaboration. So I mentioned that our master's degree is 34 credits. Uh, if you go full time, you can finish it two to two and a half years. Some people are really aggressive, so they do finish it in two years. Um, it, if you are a BS student, that is the minimum requirement. So we prefer that you are a nurse in the master's program. So if you're coming into the program, you will have to have a bachelor's in nursing, either a BS or a BSN. And then um, we have, we're accredited by the Commission on Collegiate Nursing Education. And our next accreditation period will be in, let's see, 2029, I believe, I was told. So that's pretty exciting. That just means that we recently got reaccredited. So uh, lots of activity within the College of Nursing. So the degree plans, um, I've been talking primarily about the Master's in Healthcare in informatics, um, you can actually go from our program seamlessly into a doctoral program, either the PhD, which is research-based, or the doctoral nursing practice, which is more clinically based. Um, there's an internal application for the DMP program, and then we have a, an alternate application for the PhD program, because um, the PhD program is housed in, an, in another um, division of the university, but it's still through the College of Nursing. Course layouts. Um, so our traditional semesters are 16 weeks. If you take a course during the summer, it can be eight to 10 weeks, depending on what the course is. Our online courses um, do not require any on-campus um, presence. 
So all of the informatics courses, except for the practicum, are completed online. Some of the practicum experiences are also online. It just depends on what the organization um, where your place requires, um, whether you're remote or on in person. Graduate students really need to maintain a GPA um, of 3.0. And that's pretty much a standard throughout the country. So we're on the same level. And then passing grade for graduate courses is a B minus. If you get below a B minus, we do require that you retake the course. Um, you can have one B minus and um, all the others are B or above and still maintain that 3.0. Uh, GPA, but if you get a second B minus, it'll drop your grade point average below 3.0. So you will have to retake the um, grade or the course. So this is um, a sample plan. And as you can see, it's all divided into three sections and it's based on that division that I talked about where the first third are those core courses that all graduate students take. The second third, are the um, courses that are core to the informatics program, and then the electives. Now, um, I will talk a little bit about the practicum so that you have a better idea. Alternate, or additionally, we have a comprehensive exam, and I'll talk, mention that also. So for the practicum, it's currently 270 hours. Now, that can be completed over two semesters. On a rare occasion, we have somebody that completes it on a third semester. But what that is, is the immersion within the specialty of informatics. Um, you'll work with the university in a uh, securing placement. Um, and that placement, when you pick a project, it's not only benefiting you, but it's going to benefit the organization. So this is a real life experience. And I want you to keep that in mind. It can be either in person or virtual, as I mentioned. And specifically with out of state students, there are some considerations because we need to have an affiliation agreement with all of our participating organizations. And we do have some in different states, but um, not all students are near those placement organizations. So we um, want to work with the students to make sure that they think ahead in obtaining placement. And it's really your responsibility if you're out of state to start thinking about where you want to be placed. You know, it might be where you work, it might be someplace else. If you're really having a hard time thinking about placement or finding placement, you would talk to me and then we can collaborate because we have a lot of um, creative alternatives, I like to say. Um, additionally, with the out of place um, students, they, if possible, we ask that there's a contract in place before starting your clinical rotation. And that's primarily because some states um, won't accept a Colorado degree. Now you're not in a nurse practitioner program. So what I encourage all the students to do is that are out of state, if there's any questions, to talk to your board of nursing to make sure that the informatics degree is accepted within your state. Um, and many states do accept that. Um, I'm thinking of Pennsylvania. I had one student um, who was trying to jump through hoops for Pennsylvania, but because he didn't have prescriptive authority, Pennsylvania said the degree is um, acceptable and he could have placement within the state of Pennsylvania and it wouldn't be an issue. Comprehensive exam, everybody gets nervous about a comprehensive exam. You shouldn't be nervous. Uh, yes, there's some anxiety because you're close to graduation, but this is a presentation that pulls your, comp uh, your practicum project together. Now, if you're experienced and you waive the practicum, and that's a whole nother discussion, but you would present on a, a project that you've done in your work experience. But this um, 
process of completing the comprehensive exam, you're not doing it on your own. You have a faculty group who come together for you who will listen to the presentation, but more importantly, help you prepare for it so that you will be successful. Um, I've been here, like I mentioned, two years already, and I haven't seen anybody fail. Everybody has done super, um, and they're stellar. I mean, I've been really impressed with what our students are doing. Uh, but you're going to demonstrate the integration of theory, practice, research in how you carried out your project. And once, once you pull that presentation together and you practice, every student I've talked to is pretty impressed with what they've done throughout their entire academic career. So look to it as a point of impending celebration, because when you're done with that, you get to graduate, which is really pretty exciting. Um, certification considerations, we do not require certification in, it, in informatics at this point. If you're in an NP program, yes, you need to have certification because you're at a different um, practice level. But uh, with the informatics masters, you're still practicing in an advanced role, a graduate role, but because you don't have prescriptive authority, you don't need to have that particular um, certification. We do encourage students to obtain certification because that demonstrates to either your current employer or future employer that in addition to your degree, you want to excel above what the basics are. So um, the ANA through the American Nursing Credentialing Center provides an RNBC credential, and that credential might change in the future because they're rebranding all of their um, board certification credentials, but it is in nursing informatics. And then HIMSS, that's that fr uh, free membership that you get, you have two potential options. Um, once you graduate, you would be qualified for the early careerist uh, certification, but most people work a couple of years and then they, if they wanna get the HIMSS certification, they will do that um, where focus is more on the experienced individual working with healthcare information and management. And then AMIA, the American Medical Informatics Association, they are the, academic arm and the research arm, uh, they provide a certification and individuals who are doing, either they're in academia and they're doing research or they, they want to advance where they are and they have four to six years of experience in informatics, they can sit for that exam also. So, um, I think we'll wait for questions and we'll tackle that at the end of the presentation. All right, so now we're just gonna um, briefly cover some of the admissions pieces that um, everyone's always curious about. So um, Dr. GW did an awesome job just kind of explaining really the, the depths and um, you know the data and the insights and the program structure within um, our informatics program. And so now I'm going to speak with you a little bit about, okay, so now that I'm interested, um, how my, what, what might enrolling look like? <laughs> um, so as she mentioned, you know, maintaining that B minus or better is critical for program success. We also look um, that prospective students have obtained a 3.0 or higher um, while pursuing previous degrees. And so one of our uh, minimum requirements is that all of our applicants do have a 3.0 or higher from a regionally accredited institution. Um, if you're looking at attending um, and doing our graduate certificate, uh, we do look at that you've earned a bachelor's degree in nursing from a regionally accredited institution as well. Um, and if you're looking at coming and enrolling with our postgraduate certificate, we, um, we wanna make sure that the the do, previous degrees that you have are from CCNE or ACEN accredited institutions. Um, just be, you know, that that really shows the caliber, caliber of learning and making sure and ensuring that you've received um, the foundational education that would help you be successful um, at CU as well. And what we look for in your undergraduate level courses is that you've taken research as well as um, statistics courses, just showing that you've got that um, foundation and evidence-based practice. 
Um, so when you're ready to go ahead and apply, uh, all of our applications are submitted uh, by, into Nursing CAS. And so um, I'll provide that website here briefly, but Nursing CAS is what uh, most nursing programs across the nation use. It's just an external company that helps us organize our applications. And so all documents are actually submitted into Nursing CAS, uh, no matter which program you're applying for. And so um, it, when you're when you are applying, you want to submit your official or uh, I'm sorry, your application as well as the application fee, your official transcripts um, from uh, all post-secondary institutions you've attended. Um, as well as uh, a 500 word essay, which we call our personal statement. Um, and then the contact information for three uh, different folks who can offer recommendations on your behalf. And we, we send them a link with a, um, it's kind of a brief form to just give us a little bit of input about you, your background, your potential. Um, one of those we do hope does have uh, an advanced degree in nursing, um, either a DNP, PhD, master's degree so that they can really speak on your behalf and your, and your potential. Um, we also ask that you submit a resume or CV and uh, also provide evidence of your current unencumbered RN license. So just looking at some of our deadlines, um, when, you're, when you're looking, we do actually have an application um, open right now for, um, for students who want to start in late summer, early fall. It would be our fall start term. And our upcoming deadline is going to be um, May 1st, and that's our regular decision deadline. And so uh, we are currently accepting applications. Do know that it does take a few weeks oftentimes to, um, to complete all those documents and just get everything in that we do require from that previous page. So just be aware of that and give yourself ample time so that you're not stressed um, as you're working through the application. Um, <laughs> and we do also accept applications um, for the fall and spring semester. And, and that information is also available online. Um, so, um, so you, you know, we welcome your application at any time. So here's the website for Nursing Cast. It's just nursingcast.org. Um, and what, like I mentioned, um, we have you submit uh, the contact information for three references. Um, and then also what you're looking for when you're submitting that application is that you do reach that verified status. And so um, nursing cast can be a little bit complex and confusing at times for folks. And so what you're looking for is kind of that in progress application is when you're working on your application. Once you've submitted your application, you will often go into a complete status um, or received. And then once all documents are in and have been reviewed by nursing cast, that's when you reach verified status. And so it does take a little bit of time on the back end uh, for nursing cast staff to also review all of your documents and make sure that your application is complete before we receive it. Once we, um, our CU nursing admissions staff, receive your application, we then process it. Um, we get that information over to each program for them to review your information. And that's when we welcome folks in for an interview. Um, and then what we do is we notify folks over email what our admissions decision is. And then um, our ask of folks who are admitted is that you give us a response that uh, if, of your willingness to attend and enroll within 10 business days um, after we've given you an admissions decision. So just looking at cost to attend, um, what's really cool about uh, about our indirect care programs and informatics specifically is that with our uh, program being 32 credit hours, whether you're in state or out of state, you will actually pay the same fee. And that's $740 per credit hour, uh, or not the same fee, but the same tuition. And so essentially the entire program over the two, two and a half years um, would cost you $23,680. Um, and that wouldn't be including, you know, obviously you could get, um, some of that tuition offset if you were to uh, if you were able to have that employer reimbursement um, or uh, scholarships and so we do offer scholarships for about 10 to 15 percent of our students who enroll um, typically scholarships are um, sent out or scholarship information to apply is sent out after students are admitted uh, and so that's always a viable option as well and then um, for postgrad and um, certificate programs um, depending on the number of credits you take, just because it's up to 16 credit hours, depending on the curriculum that you've taken 
uh, prior to that time, it's it still continues to be $740 per credit. And so what we refer to if you're out of state as um, the tuition that allows you to get in-state tuition is we, we actually refer to that as tuition buy-down. Um, essentially what it does is it um, is that we buy down your tuition to help allow you to have in-state tuition. So we also encourage students to fill out financial aid um, just because when you do that, it allows you to open up some different options for loans, um, such as a Stafford loan, Graduate Plus loan. Um, and it also gives us um, a greater uh, greater insight and information as to your financial profile um, when we're when we're considering students for scholarships. Um, there's also a re loan repayment calculator that we often refer students to to just see kind of what you're looking at for loan repayments. Um, and obviously, um, if you can see the percentage, the the fixed interest rates that we've listed here, they're they're substantially lower than credit cards. I have heard um, over and over again about folks putting tuition on credit cards and, and you know, it's always better to, um, to take out loans through the federal government between four and seven and a half percent um, than it is to be paying on a 20, 25 percent uh, percent interest rate with, with credit cards. So um, we just like to encourage you for that. I know when I was returning back to school to get my master's degree, I had no idea that as a master's student, I should be applying for financial aid. So um, that's one thing that we like to um, just kind of make sure students or prospective students are aware of. So while, while folks are going to be, um, you know, learning virtually through this program, it's also important to know that we have a lot of resources, whether you're in person or virtual. And so one of those is our writing center. Um, uh, it's a pretty robust program and we have great staff who can offer um, guidance and support and they they offer support not only in um, writing your essays and, and um, as you're progressing through the program, the, very, the various um, types of in the writing that you would have to do, but also um, if you need support with uh, further developing a resume and things like that, um, they offer a wide array of services. We also have our Strauss Health Science Library. And so what's really cool about that is the staff in there are highly trained um, to help folks know how to research uh, in health-related um, databases, such as EBSCOhost and some of the more advanced um, databases that we have here at um, CU Nursing. And if you are ever on campus, that library is pretty incredible. So I'd always encourage folks to come by and pop in there and just see it as well. We also have some academic success coaches uh, who are here. You know, a lot of our students, whether you're pursuing a bachelor's degree, a master's, a DNP, um, you know, it, it can be stressful to come back to school, especially uh, most of our most of our students are working full time. And so we do like to offer that additional uh, embedded support so that students know, you know, if I'm struggling with interpersonal um, topics or emotional or I'm just trying to work through and kind of figure out how I'm going to balance my time. We have um, some folks here on campus to help you navigate that as well. We also have group therapy support, um, teaching assistant opportunities, and then we have a very involved DEI committee, not only for students, but also for staff and faculty. And we have monthly meetings and we have some different opportunities where folks are getting involved in communities through our DEI committees, um, which are pretty incredible and we're very excited about. So next steps. Um, you know, Dr. GW definitely makes herself avail available and wants to answer any additional questions, whether it's today or in the future. Um, and, you know, if you're feeling ready to kind of take that step and apply, go ahead and um, go into Nursing CAS. Uh, we also can provide guidance and support if you hit any hurdles in Nursing CAS. And so you can just reach out to any one of us in our admissions team. Um, and I can put my information in the chat as well. Um, or you can schedule an appointment with our graduate advisor. Um, to discuss any questions or concerns. Um, and remember, just kind of a, a quick reminder to get to reach that verified status once you are in nursing CAS and once you are applying. Um, so that email address, nursing.admissions at UC Denver, you can always email um, if you have any questions pertaining um, your application. And so um, there's also our website, which tends to offer quite a bit of, of detail as well. And then Dr. W um, provided her email address here for you as well. Um, so at this time, we'd like to welcome any questions that you might have. 
Um, I'm going to turn off the recording and just answer questions so that folks feel like they um, that we've covered everything for you and that you feel comfortable uh, moving forward from here.